Um, uh, I'm Robbie Alampay, I'm Editor-in-Chief of uh, Business World. Thank you again, Secretary Dominguez, for joining us. The Secretary only has about uh, 10 minutes left before he goes to uh, his next appointment. I'm here just to facilitate a, a conversation. We would welcome questions and comments from the floor. Uh, we have microphones uh, on the floor. At the same time, as already mentioned, you could text in your questions to 0917-538-9971. The number is on your screen. You could also tweet us using the hashtag BW Economic Forum or hashtag BW Echo Forum. Okay, so we'll, I'll just shoot the, uh, get this ball rolling, but we, again, we invite everyone. Uh, Secretary Dominguez, before we get into everything you've discussed on a national level, maybe give us a, uh, uh, an, an illustration of the Duterte effect. Kamusta po ang Davao? How are things now in Davao? Uh, our, our editors note that uh, uh, land prices have been going up. There's a lot of locational uh, uh, interest in, in Davao. How are things picking up? And how does this, uh, this audience look at Davao now? It's, it's going to be a... Uh, it's already becoming a center of government of sorts. At the same time, we know that the Duterte administration has a particular push to develop Mindanao. Thank you. Yeah, uh, MVP just told me that Davao is the politically correct, correct city, and I think he's right. Uh, business is booming, and uh, uh, of course, uh, a lot of attention has been focused on uh, Davao, but really, the big story is uh, a lot of attention is now being focused on Mindanao as uh, an area that uh, needs development and that will probably be uh, the major food basket for the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, MVP touched on some areas, agriculture, tourism, mining, of course. Uh, what's the general... Uh, 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 is there any sector that, uh, that, that the Duterte administration is looking at that was not touched upon by, by MVP? No, hardly any. But really, uh, we're looking uh, more at infrastructure uh, development, particularly in the rural areas. Yes. And uh, we have uh, lined up uh, quite a number of projects for implementation either through PPP mm -hmm. or through uh, government budget, uh, budget uh, methods. In terms of ramping up spending on infrastructure, this has been a theme, uh, actually not just of President Duterte, all the past, uh, even the, the candidates for president, everybody said we have to ramp up spending on infrastructure. Is there any particular uh, bottleneck or innovation uh, that you've identified that can be tweaked uh, that can easily uh, see uh, uh, spending and, exp and, and expenditures rising immediately? Um, we have uh, noted that a typical PPP project takes uh, 29 months on the average to get started. And definitely uh, we've been discussing with uh, the NEDA, which is in charge of the PPP Center, uh, as well as with the budget department, yes. that this... Uh, process has to be speeded up yes. and brought down to probably below 20 months. Yeah. I mean, the targets are good. I mean, I, and I, that has been, for a lot of people, a no-brainer. PPP was, uh, from, the, from day one of the previous administration, was identified as a pillar. Um, as the years went on, pe people were saying, what's happening doesn't seem to be getting off the ground. Putting it bluntly, what went wrong with PPP? Why was it so slow in your view, in your review right now? Well, to start with, they were just starting with a new system. Well, sorry. To start with, they stopped the PPP projects for two years uh, while they were reviewing everything. That is a mistake we are not going to commit. Uh, we are going ahead with all of them. We will just assume that the previous administration uh, did the right thing and then... Uh, we will push ahead. So there will be no hiatus in uh, time for the PPP projects mm -hmm. that are already in the pipeline. So we are not going to review them. The next thing we're going to review, as I mentioned earlier, 
is uh, we're going to review all these uh, procurement processes. Uh, we're going to review the uh, process of, uh, you know, the approvals yeah. and uh, cutting down the red tape for getting yes. all the different approvals for all these projects. All of these things, just like FOI, you're, you're confident can be executed and improved just through EOs. Or is this a is this something? Are, are some of these things going to have to go through the legislative mill? And what's the timeline for all of these reforms? I mean, for uh, for the, on the procurement law, for example, cutting down on red tape. Some of the targets that you've mentioned. What's the exact timeline that you're you're looking at? What can be done by EO is going to be done, and it, I suppose it will be uh, the process will begin, and some of them will end within the first six months. Yeah. Uh, some items like the procurement law, uh, tax reforms, do have to go to uh, legislation. In fact, I have begun consultations with uh, some legislators already on the uh, tax reform law that we are going to be proposing. So it has already begun. Yeah. Uh, in the next couple of uh, weeks, we will e expand that consultation to include the private sector, yeah. uh, so uh, by the time it hits the the uh, Senate or the House floors, mm. there will all already be have been some kind of consensus mm. that has been built around these proposals. Okay, uh, we've already the, the question of an energy mix has already been um, uh, brought up and, and raised. Uh, there is a push, of course, to, renew, to, to renewable energy, um, alternative source of energy, but what's the immediate policy and direction of the government with regards to uh, providing an energy mix that is not only sustainable but addresses the immediate concerns, particularly of Visayas and Mindanao, which have been teetering on an energy crisis for the past years already? Well, anyway, uh, as, uh, as mentioned, there has to be a... Uh, energy policy mix so but at the moment we will proceed with what we have already on in the pipeline we would that's so we are not going to stop everything okay. while we're reviewing the uh, the mix that mix uh, the policy on the energy mix will of course require a lot of consultation with uh, both the uh, the entities that provide as well as uh, the, the people that uh, are using this. And uh, during these consultations, we will, as clearly as possible, point out all the pluses and mi minuses of, uh, of uh, whatever, uh, whatever proposals are on the table. Okay. I understand we have a question from the floor. Uh, yes. Yes. Could uh, you introduce yourself, uh, please? Your name and uh, your company. Right. I'm uh, Mr. Ricard, a business consultant and advisor as well for some local companies. Uh, Secretary Dominguez, uh, two things that uh, the market is uh, now expecting, uh, as they said, change is coming. One is the Duterte administration. The other one is the ASEAN harmonization. In the previous administration. There's been so much talk by then Finance Secretary on how we are preparing for the harmonization. And we'd like to find out, is this also part of, a, is there in broad strokes a program uh, which will also encompass this? Because the, as I understand it now, the integration is here, it's the harmonization now, that many Filipinos seems to be asking, what's that? Are we really ready for it? Well, the harmonization program has begun. Uh, I don't think it has uh, been explained very clearly to everybody. And definitely that is, again, part of our uh, subject matter for the consultative process. Again, uh, just, uh, just to bring to the fore the idea that our uh, government is going to be uh, uh, focus will, will be focusing on consensus building on a series of issues that are coming before the public. It's very important that uh, everybody or at least the majority is on the same page. And again, 
you know, I, I think I've said this several times, we are not going to do things, you know, uh, unilaterally, unilaterally or pabigla bigla. I mean, this is going to certainly require a lot of consultation as we have done in uh, the Sulong Pilipinas project that uh, we did uh, in Davao last month. This will be a continuing process. Thank you. We have another Secretary. question here. Hello, Secretary Sani Dominguez. Uh, I'm the chairman of F1 Hotel. I have three suggestions for you. Number one, is there any chance we can establish a foreign investment authority? It means a one-stop shop for the investor because many of my friend investors like to invest in this country. They don't know how to start and uh, there are lots of red tape in our government and why, why not establish a one-stop shop for foreign investment authority? First, uh, I, qu first yeah, I, question. I, I believe that uh, to some extent the BOI, uh, the BOI already uh, provides that function. But if you believe that it uh, has to be uh, focused a little more on foreign investment, uh, yes, definitely. Uh, there's another a agency in uh, government called the PESA, which I think uh, has been very helpful for uh, foreign factories and foreign investment coming into the Philippines. From our experience, we are locked behind in our Asian country. It's because uh, of our red tape in, uh, I'm sorry, NEDA, previous NEDA, and also our DTI in long time in approval of the investment project. So I'm suggesting why don't we put up an office called Foreign Investment Authority, a one-stop shop to help the foreign investor. In fact, I want to go a step further. I will say that I think it's more important for us to identify the kinds of investments we want and to go after the best companies in the world to come here, not just sit down and wait for them to come. I think uh, a more proactive uh, approach whereby we identify, say, you know, the top camera makers in the world, for example, and then go after them and make specific proposals to them to come to the Philippines. I think that is a, I, I think that's better than just waiting here and uh, whatever lands on our shores, we help them. The second question, is Thank there any chance we'll, of we'll, tax amnesty? Tax amnesty so we can have a fresh start in our new government. Yeah, you are not the first to, to uh, propose that. We are certainly going to think about it very carefully. Okay. The third okay. question. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, we'll have to give uh, chances to other questions. We Good do morning. A, we do have a question yeah. texted in on the other side of uh, incentives. Uh, somebody is asking, what about smugglers? What will be the uh, penalty regime on, on smugglers? What would be some, uh, uh, some innovation there? Is there a hotline for the DOF for us to report all illegal activity? <laughs> well, on smugglers, I guess it depends on what, what the crime is. Uh, definitely, we will be going after them. And, uh, you know, it depends on what level of... Uh, of criminality they are they are uh, doing whether a fine suspension jail mm -hmm. or whatever should I ask for all smugglers to start surrendering now <laughs> <laughs> after all file done is there <laughs> good morning uh, sorry the other question was what what is it um, is a land uh, bank DBP merger pushing through oh uh, no they were asking on the uh, on the hotline, we are going yeah, to yeah. set that up. Okay. Thank you. And, yeah, and, and um, I, I've read it. There's a question here. Is the land bank DBP merger pushing through? Will there be a merger of, of, uh, of banks? No. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> I'm Jun Pala Fox, an architect planner. And uh, thank you, Secretary Dominguez, for sharing and for accepting the very challenging role. Uh, so the unsolicited proposal, so we can now put forward bold revolutionary ideas. 
And one of them, which I, some members of the business community have shared with me, is there a possibility of abolishing customs and BIR? That's number one. I work for a foreign government, uh, Dubai. They have no personal income tax. Everybody just pay value-added tax. In our country, the corrupt and the smugglers are tax exempt. They don't pay taxes. Whereas all of us, uh, more honest paying Filipinos, we pay taxes. And, uh, and uh, with that, uh, value-added tax, even the corrupt and the smugglers will pay the same value-added tax as the very poor. If you don't want to pay that, don't go to the restaurants. And it's being done elsewhere in the world. Secondly, the Real Estate Investment Trust. When I started it 14 years ago in Harvard, it was so simple. When it came here, it became so complicated. And we have so many stupid, no, not stupid, obsolete laws that make us less globally competitive. Like the leasehold to foreigners, land lease. Most of foreign investments, 99 years to 1,000 years. The Guinness Brewery in Dublin, 1,000 year lease, probably uh, they, pa they subsidize Dublin, the universities, the open spaces. So with your invitation for bold recommendations, I'll be putting forward emailing it to you, if I may. And thanks to you and Secretary Pernia for your sacrifice in accepting the challenging role. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, on the matter of the REIT, yeah. we will reopen the consultations about that. In fact, uh, the first meeting we will have is tomorrow evening on uh, opening, uh, well, not opening, but uh, re-energizing, re uh, reviewing the IRR of the current REIT law. Thank you, sir. We only have about a minute left. I'll, I'll give it to you, sir, if there's anything else you'd like to add uh, uh, to your comments. But I'd also assure our, our, our audience that after the Vice President speaks uh, later on, the first panel was really asked to, to react and to continue the discussion uh, from our keynote uh, speaker. So we will still have time to discuss um, all the questions that are, have not been put forward. Uh, but Secretary Dominguez, you'll... Uh, Nothing else. Uh, I just wish to uh, uh, request you and uh, to listen to the President when he says uh, obeying laws in the Philippines is no longer optional. And I'm sure he meant uh, paying the right taxes as well as paying the right duties and uh, taxes on your imports. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pa.